You know the drill. A few weeks ago, we did Assassin's Creed Unity, so it is now time to see how far I can get in Assassin's Creed Rogue without being spotted. I was pretty proud of how far I made it in Unity. It was my second longest time yet. Valhalla, believe it or not, was first, but that game's opening has very few stealth sections, so it was quite easy to get hours in without being spotted. But with a game like Unity that has a heavy emphasis on on stealth, I did better than I expected myself to. But it wasn't going to get any easier heading into Rogue. Like all the other games I've done these videos for thus far, there are some forced combat sections in Rogue, although it's mainly with naval combat. But Rogue, even in its first couple sequences, still has quite a lot of stealth opportunities, which is something I of course really appreciate when it comes to these videos and AC games in general. I expected these videos to get hard as we got into the older games, but it sort of balances out because these games have consistent stealth systems. So as long as I played it smart and patient, it really isn't too challenging. I think patience is the biggest thing I've learned from doing these videos and the key to being a master assassin. I feel like when I normally play these games, I get too impatient and try to rush through some stealth sections, which usually just ends up with me getting spotted. But now that I absolutely need to remain undetected for these videos, it's made me way more patient and aware with these missions. You're not timed in these games. Well, at least not usually, so you can take your time to think up a plan or the most effective way to deal with a target. If there's any bit of advice I can give to those who want to get better at stealth in these games, it's patience. Don't be aggressive and try to rush through a mission because it looks cool. You can take your time and as you get more comfortable with it, you'll notice you will naturally be able to think and execute quicker. But anyways, enough of me being a mentor for now, let's make our own luck and see how far I can get in Assassin's Creed Rogue without being spotted. Our story begins with everyone's favorite loyal Irish assassin, Shea Patrick Cormac, the luckmaker himself. We start with some simple parkour, and the game fakes us out by having us pretend to assassinate Liam. The fact that you play as a Templar was all over this game's marketing, so I always thought it was a clever subversion of expectations and a way to tease the audience a bit. Shea says the thing. I make my own look. Yeah, you better get used to that. And good old Liam and I headed over to where we heard some cannon fire. And you know me, I love snow in video games, and while this game may not look the best visually, it certainly has its moments of beauty. You know, I would actually love to see an Assassin's Creed Rogue remake, since it was released in the shadow of Unity, and copied and pasted so much from Black Flag, it would be great if it got a remake with all new gameplay and graphics, to make it stand out in the series more, and give Rogue the attention and upgrade it deserves. Probably will never happen, considering it's the least selling game of all the main titles in the series, but an assassin can dream. Plus, they could also punch up the story and fill up some of those plot holes. I think it'd be a great idea, but hey, I don't make the decisions. Liam and I meet with Chevalier, who's being a crybaby as per usual. I swear, this guy was created with the sole intention of making the players dislike the assassins. Shay gets a little too cocky and offends Chevalier's fragile ego, and the two end up in a brawl, which is our first forced combat encounter. Unluckily for Chevalier, Chevalier, he's fighting against the main character, who not only has plot armor, but literally makes his own luck, so he never stood a chance. Liam breaks up the fight, and we go to liberate the smugglers who have been taken captive, leading us into our first stealth mission. A big key to stealth in the North American saga of AC games is utilizing bushes for cover. They are abundant in a lot of these missions, and make it rather easy to maneuver and assassinate targets 
unseen. That combined with the whistle, and it's an easy way to get kills. Not too different from my strategy in the RPG games, actually. At this point in the game, I don't have any other tools either, so the bushes are a lifesaver. Some of the guards happen to see their dead comrades, and they ran over to them, splitting up and allowing for an easy kill. I double air assassinate the last two. I was a little worried about it, since those double air assassinations can be inconsistent at times, but it worked out here. But this next part was pretty difficult. I had to take out the targets on the ship, there wasn't a lot of space to maneuver, no hiding places, and a lot of the red coats are in close proximity to each other. So this is where I exercised my biggest tip to you fellow assassins from earlier, patience. Another really helpful tool in stealth in some of these older games is the mini-map. It tells you where the enemies are and which direction they're facing. It's extremely helpful, if not a little overpowered, and I relied on it a lot in this playthrough. I took out the two guards at the rear of the ship and headed back over the edge, as I was worried they may spot the bodies. And it's a very good thing I did, because that's exactly what happened, and two of the guards came running over. While I was waiting for their SSI to clear, I noticed something interesting. The sign on the back of this ship says Morrigan. You must be thinking, well obviously Master Assassin, that is the Morrigan after all. But no, no no, at this point, it shouldn't be. Because Shay names this ship the Morrigan, and he doesn't do that until after he claims it. So this sign should not be on the ship yet. Heh, <laughs> explain that Ubisoft Sophia. I'm sure video game developers love me always pointing out the smallest oversights with their work. I just thought it was funny, I never noticed or thought about that before. But once the SSI cleared, and the guards went back to their set routes, I climbed back up and took another one out. I decided to get to some higher ground by taking the lift, and I was once again waiting for one of the guards to see the body. I was probably overly cautious, but why take any chances, right? I don't think I had ever actually managed to do this section undetected before. I remember always just being too lazy and fighting in combat. But again, doing these videos, it forces me to be on my A game. So I waited and waited, and waited for the right time to strike. I studied this one guard's route since he's the only one actually moving, and I noticed he was on a set path that just loops every time. So when he turns his back and heads to the front of the Morrigan, that would be my window. The second he moved, I assassinated the two guards in the back and got the easy final kill on him, freeing the smugglers. And after all that hard work, the cutscene is just like, what's stealth? Never heard of it. But this is a really cool looking action scene, so I let it go. The game then puts me through the tutorials for naval combat, and I sank some British gunboats, where we reached the game's title card with a beautiful sunset and theme playing in the background. Definitely one of the quickest title cards of the series. I'm then pulled out of the Animus by Violet DaCosta, who speaks to me like I'm a three-year-old with amnesia. And she tells me that there's been some sort of virus baked into Shay's genetic memories that's affecting the whole building, no doubt placed there by the assassins. Probably Rebecca? I'm not sure if that's ever explained. We speak with Melanie LeMay from Black Flag. For some reason, a lot of her employees seem to be mute. Maybe Abstergo makes you take a vow of silence when you work for them. Otto Berg tells us to keep looking into Shay's memories, and one server puzzle and history lesson about Al Mualim later, and we're back to the luck maker himself at the Davenport homestead. Rogue and how it ties into AC3, Black Flag, and Unity simultaneously is one of my favorite qualities about this game. It really helps with the context of those stories, and gives some good closure to the North American saga of AC games. Although I still wanted to see Connor and Arno fight Shay, but whatever. That would be way too cool and well thought out for Ubisoft to do. Shay witnesses a very wholesome moment between Adewale and Achilles, and we're off to do some assassin training. At this point, Shay is still relatively young and new to the Brotherhood, so it was cool to see some of the training process of the assassins, since it's typically glossed over in the other games. I started with Liam, 
Adam, who had me shoot some dummies, then Hope, whose training actually posed a threat to this video. Since you're supposed to assassinate these dummies without being spotted by the other assassins. It didn't prove too much of a challenge though, being able to take advantage of the trees and bushes to remain hidden. The last bit of training is with Kasegawase, who teaches us the art of tree parkour and hunting. It's really cool that Shay was actually taught in the ways of the natives as well, like Connor was. Not even Haytham could do tree parkour, so Achilles was smart to teach his assassins how to do this as well. But with that done, I was able to craft some new pistol holsters, where I received an incredibly generous gift from my beloved mentor, Achilles. What a wholesome bond these two have. I'm sure their friendship will last forever. Shay and Liam head off on their next mission, and I gotta say, I wish Rogue focused on the friendship of these two more. They're like lifelong friends, but the game doesn't really explore that too much. I think it would have made what happens later all the more heartbreaking, but Rogue obviously didn't have tons of time to explore all these different characters and dynamics with its limited runtime. Anyways, we sail off to meet with Chevalier, who again just insults Shay for absolutely no reason. This guy must work for Party City, am I right? And we head out for some more naval combat. This beginning doesn't have tons of stealth opportunities, but don't worry, shortly after it has much more when you start going after targets. After an easy victory on the seas, we sailed over to Perse to upgrade the Morrigan and headed out to Anticosti. On the way, we were ambushed by a convoy of navy ships, where I remembered, hey, you can shoot icebergs to deal damage to surrounding ships in this game. And I think that worked a little too well. We met up with the assassin's pirate informer, who told us that Lawrence Washington currently possesses the manuscript we're looking for. That's right, George Washington's brother is a high-ranking Templar. Poor guy. His reputation is mostly just known as George Washington's brother. I arrived in Albany to meet up with Achilles and the others, who assigned Liam and I to assassinate Lawrence. Liam happens to perfectly set up Shay to say his favorite catchphrase, well, if we've any luck, that ship will lead us right to him. I make my own. Seriously, Liam, you walked right into that one. Where the game then wanted me to tail another ship. I wasn't sure if this really counted towards the video, because I could technically be spotted by other ships here, but it's not actually on land. But regardless of if it counts or not, I was being very careful, keeping my eyes glued to the minimap, making sure I'm steering clear of the other ship's detection cones. I followed the ship to the shore undetected, where I had to continue to follow on foot with some parkour. Rogue may not have the best parkour system, but after the most recent games, it feels innovative. But I then would stumble upon one of my biggest stealth missions yet. I had to loot the mysterious package located on the ship in a restricted area with guards all over the port. And I wasn't off to a great start, nearly getting spotted by these two guards trying to jump into the haystack. I patiently waited for the guards to separate before taking out one, but I was almost once again spotted by another group. Luckily, I managed to make it into a bush just in time, Man, that was close. One might even say lucky. The guards had also seen the corpse I just dropped, so they were on high alert, which wasn't going to make things any easier. One of them came to investigate the bush though, so that gave me an easy assassination. I really appreciate that you can't be spotted while doing a hiding spot assassination in this game. It makes stealth way more fair and consistent. But with the other two guards still searching near the haystack, I noticed a very easy opportunity. Rather than going through the trouble of avoiding all the guards at the port, I could just go in the water and swim my way over to the ship, which is exactly what I did. However, the boat was not vacant, and as I already discussed earlier, boat stealth isn't easy considering the confined space to work with. One of them got close to seeing me, but I ledge assassinated him, leaving only two guards left. So after watching their routes for a little bit, I found my window to climb up and assassinate them. Shay then discovers a mysterious rifle and without any idea what exactly it is or what it shoots, he nails a wandering guard with a sleep dart. That was so lucky. Oh, shut own. up! 
Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. I had some uh, pent-up frustration, I guess. But most importantly, I now had the air rifle, one of the most useful weapons at my disposal for stealth. This would make an immediate difference. With that now in hand, my next task was to locate Lawrence. First, however, I had to get past the guards and actually get into the party. I shot the lookout with a sleeping dart. Another nice thing about Rogue is you can actually aim the air rifle without having to expose yourself from the stalking zone and risk being spotted. Not every game in the series does this. Some of them make you detectable while aiming in a bush, like Origins and Valhalla, for example. That actually screwed me over in the Origins video, if you remember that. Flashback. However, good news, because it seems like in Mirage, you can actually aim things while remaining hidden. But with the sniper in the watchtower now indisposed, it gives me the opportunity for an easy whistle cover kill. I waited for the other two roaming guards to turn their backs and made a run for the entrance. However, the fun had only just begun, as the party had far more security. I started by using my eagle vision to tag as many enemies as possible. I really like this version of Eagle Vision, with being able to tag enemies and then having their silhouettes highlighted, makes it easy to track them even from a distance. After carefully surveying the area, I went into the haystack and patiently waited for a poor soul to walk by. Naturally, that happened a few seconds later. Imagine walking in a party and just being grabbed and stabbed out of nowhere by a grown man hiding in a stack of hay. This man probably had the biggest jump scare of his life before his death. And what's this haystack doing at a party anyways? AC oddities aside, I then used the bushes to move from cover to cover, once again just abusing these stalking zones along with the whistle when necessary. A lot of these guards could quite easily be avoided as well, just using eagle vision to keep them marked and keeping an eye on the minimap made it easy. I tried to double air assassinate these two, but remember what I said said earlier about those being inconsistent. <laughs> Man, I got so lucky. No! No! One of the nearby guards quickly came running and nearly saw me, but I went back up to the roof and air assassinated him as well. Meanwhile, these guests are celebrating? I think they're cheering me on. Anyways, I got up to a higher vantage point to try and locate Washington, and after a bit of searching, I found him. He was already on death's door and had passed off the box and manuscript, but Shay's orders of eliminating Washington Washington took first priority. This was my first real specific assassination mission of the game thus far, and I have to say, I really love the way this level is designed, plus the setting with the party, it just feels like classic Assassin's Creed social stealth. As I looked for another way to infiltrate the area, there were some incoming guards, so I took it upon myself to crowd blend. Thank god crowd blending actually works in this game, and I climbed my way up onto the roof roof to get a nice bird's eye view and plan my strategy. I hit the rooftop sniper with a sleeping dart and dove back down onto ground level only a short few feet from Lawrence. I took cover in a bush nearby and tried to bait him over to me with a whistle. However, I failed to remember that whistling in this game can attract more than one enemy at a time. So Washington and his guard came walking over. If I assassinated one, the other would surely see me, so I had to think fast. Luckily, Washington's guard got a little bit ahead of his master, which allowed me to quick shot him with a sleeping dart before Washington could see a thing. And then with one move, I took them both out with double hidden blades to the face. Improv is another key skill to being an assassin. Lawrence is all like, yeah, you fell for our distraction, stupid, and Shay has to race his way back to the Morgan and escape. And once I regained control of the ship, we sailed out of there no problem. Shay feels guilty about killing an old man on death's door, which is not the same energy he just had a minute ago. You scheming 
snake. But hey, nobody ever accused Shay of being level-headed. Our next move was to reconvene with Le Chasseur and Chevalier after a time skip, and within that time skip, Achilles' wife Abigail and son Connor have died. Liam and Shay discussed what happened, but I've said it many times, I always felt like that should have been focused on more when it came to Achilles' character in this game. It would better explain some of his decisions as mentor later on. I think some scenes with his wife and son would have been nice too, but oh well. It would have helped more clearly explain why he goes down this sort of darker path, but again, they didn't have much time to explore these themes, especially when you consider Rogue only had 8 months of development, while the story, I'm sure, had way less than even that. I know they were still writing it as they were filming. Le Chasseur informs us that the precursor box currently lies with Samuel Smith, who had been studying it, so with our next target in mind, we head out to hunt him down. And with a new upgrade to the ship, I might add, the Puckle Guns, which is a very nice upgrade from the swivels of AC-3 and Black Flag. We quickly found Sam Smith and chased him through the open seas as he fled like a coward, but actually, he was just leading us into an ambush. But it was cute that he thought only four ships would be enough to bring down Shay and the Morrigan. We make short work of the pathetic ambush and began chasing Smith again, who had hoped to watch us die instead of taking the opportunity to flee, an idiotic mistake that would prove costly to him. As he retreats once again like the coward he is, he sets the ocean ablaze, but his cheap Templar tricks cannot help him now. Shay's plot armor is unbreakable, his luck is unfathomable. We followed him to a small island where he chose to make his last stand, and this is where we encountered my second assassination mission. Luckily, most of the guards here can be avoided by going around and using the trees. It's a good thing Kasegawase taught Shay tree parkour, huh? I took out the sniper in the watchtower, and the trees gave me a clear path to Mr. Smith. But this is where I found myself in a bit of a difficult situation. Look how well guarded and surrounded he is. Even if I managed to assassinate him back there, I'm likely to be spotted by the surrounding guards as I'm doing so. I thought of some alternative methods, and it almost immediately hit me. If I just shoot him with a berserk dart, his guards will kill him for me, all while I just chill in this tree and enjoy the show. And it worked like a charm. The man got absolutely bullied by his own minions. One of the easiest assassinations of my life. You know what's strange to me though? I thought the memory corridor could only be accessed if Shay killed the target, but I didn't technically kill Sam Smith here, so how how is Shay able to speak with him? Then again, the lore and ways the memory corridors work have always been a bit confusing and inconsistent, so I'll suspend my disbelief. Shay takes the precursor box, and now all we need is the manuscript to use it. I think one of the strangest things about Rogue's narrative are these artifacts. The box and manuscript were never a thing before, and it feels like there's no real cohesion with all the different Izu artifacts anymore. But anyways, with the box in hand, we returned to Albany to find the manuscript. As I got closer to the mission, I noticed a big chunk of the city is actually now a restricted area, which meant I had to be really careful. Being spotted in a free roam after all of this would be really depressing. It wasn't easy though, as guards occupied the bridge, I needed to cross to get to my objective. So instead, I went all the way around, took out a guard on the way, swam across the river, and climbed up this cliff face. We met back up with Hope and Liam, who tasked Shay with finding James Wardrop another high-ranking Templar. I had to go back to the restricted area I was just in, so once again, I had to be cautious. There were three nearby guards, so I shot one with a sleeping dart and double-air assassinated the other two. I may have been able to just avoid them, but the opportunity was just too good to not take advantage of. I once again moved from cover to cover, assassinating anyone in my way, and I reached the Albany Congress, with none other than Benjamin 
Franklin delivering a speech. This man always manages to get himself right in the middle of the Assassin and Templar War, helping both sides while simultaneously having no idea that each side even exists. It would have been a funny plot twist if he knew about the Assassins and Templars all along, and just went along with it anyway. William Johnson, who we of course know from AC3, from Haytham's Order, promises to get Franklin the manuscript. But Mr. Wardrop is too scared to hand it over, so he sends this sad excuse for a uniform to go retrieve it. And the man is able to take about three steps before he's hit with a sleeping dart and is drilled with a hidden blade to the spine by yours truly. I make my way over to the fort where James is hiding, and as I'm climbing up to the top, I accidentally pack eject all the way down, which I'm sure you can imagine how frustrating that was. But once I made it inside the fort, I once again made it a priority to survey the area and mark any enemies with eagle vision that I can. From there on, I made my way to the watchtower. Those who stood in my way were met with a hidden blade. I hit the sniper with a sleep dart to ensure I didn't get spotted from a distance, as that can happen a lot in these games. And once I made it to the watchtower, I had a clear view of the target. I decided to reuse the same easy trick I used on Sam Smith earlier and shot Wardrop with a berserk dart, forcing his own comrades to end his life. Such an easy way of stealthily taking out a target without even having to get close. Shay recovered the manuscript and I had to escape the area. In my daring escape, I went for the stylish dive into the water. I make my own l Thankfully, this isn't a when I die, the video ends challenge. So, second time's the charm. I escape the fort and head out to meet up with Hope and Franklin so we can finally activate the box. Or so that's what I thought. But turns out Franklin had his lightning rods confiscated, so it's up to me to get them back. Believe it or not, this is the first on land tailing mission of the game. Way less tailing missions in Rogue than what's present in AC3 and Black Flag. Good to see Ubisoft Sophia understood that criticism, but just because it was a tailing mission didn't make this section any less challenging. There were still tons of redcoats in the area, and I had to avoid them while keeping my target in sight. I took out this guard in a haystack and sneakily parkoured my way across the bridge, avoiding the huge army that awaited me. I decided to kill this guy, which was very unnecessary, but as I often state, I have a bloodlust, and sometimes Sometimes I can't help my assassin tendencies. Please help me. I had a bit of a close call with a rooftop sniper, whom I was not expecting to be there, but once again those sleeping darts are proving to be clutch. It turns out the guards found the guy I killed from earlier, which actually helped me out in this situation, because they were all flocking over to that area, leaving my current location rather empty. I continued to tail the soldier through bushes and tall grass alike, when I finally arrived arrived at the location of Franklin's lightning rods. Once again, my bloodlust almost got the better of me as I tried to assassinate this guy, which nearly got me spotted by another nearby guard, but I was able to make it back into the haystack in time. I had a clear shot to the barn, so I quickly ran in, collected the rods, and began to make my way off the farm. Once again, I took advantage of the stalking zones and whistle, another sleeping dart on a sniper, and was able to make it back successfully successfully to Hope and Benji. The box is struck by lightning, and like an absolute madman, Benji decides to touch it as it's being electrocuted. The real MVP of this story. Not even Desmond could survive that. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, still too soon. And the box displays a holographic image of the globe, where Shay recognizes Lisbon as one of the sites marked. We then returned to Albany, where Achilles assigned Shay to head to Lisbon and retrieve the Izu artifact, where everything starts to go wrong. First of all, Achilles, Shay is still a relatively green assassin. And sure, he knows the area, but this is a very important mission. Of all the assassins you could send, you choose him? 
That's actually quite a lot of trust to put in the luck maker. I'd at least send other assassins to accompany him. Like, of course, Liam is off doing God knows what. If he was on this mission with Shay, then maybe all of this could have been avoided. And I know a lot of people blame Achilles for all the conflict in Rogue, but in his defense, he did say, Ship, wait. Be careful, Shay. Pieces of Eden are powerful relics. Not that it means it's necessarily Shay's fault, but it's obvious Achilles didn't intend to destroy a city. But anyways, nothing can stop the threat of fate once it's in motion. We arrived in Lisbon, which looks beautiful. Too bad there's nothing left of it to explore once we're done here. After some parkour and a very simple puzzle that actually reminds me a lot of those tombs from AC2, we head down below the church to retrieve the piece of Eden. And it just, for whatever reason, reason, dissolves in Shay's hands. Yeah, where's that luck making now, Shay? Seems to me you're fresh out. So you probably know how it goes. The entire city begins to fall apart, thousands die, and we go through some very cool parkour sequences. This entire sequence has always really impressed me, considering the limited development time and budget of Rogue, and yet it's still one of the more memorable sequences of the series. Shay escapes onto the Morrigan and looks on at the destruction of Lisbon, which looks like cardboard, I might add. I just praised how good the sequence looked, and then it shows this. But immediately from there, we cut to an infuriated Shay confronting Achilles for making him destroy a city. Again, Shay, it's not like Achilles meant for that to happen. Twas an accident, child. But on the other hand, after what just happened, you can't really fault Shay for not thinking clearly. This is all just one giant misunderstanding. I'm sure they'll sit this down and talk it out once tempers have cooled. <laughs> yeah, right. Shay decides to betray Achilles and steal the manuscript, which leads to a fight, and just like that, we're being hunted by our brothers, and I'm left with a very challenging stealth situation. There were tons of assassins nearby searching for me, along with mortar fire bombarding the area. Just look at the mini-map. How in the world am I going to do this stealthily? The optional objective also tells me not to kill anyone, which just isn't going to be possible if I'm going to do this stealthily, so I have no choice but to draw first blood. And of course, it's Chevalier who's firing the mortars. The guy always hated Shay, and the first chance he gets, he tries to obliterate him with mortars, even though it could easily cause friendly casualties and destroy the homestead. How is this guy an assassin, and how is he not kicked out after this? At this point, I'm just trying my best to watch their movements and find a good window to move to the next bush, but it's not easy, especially with my screen shaking from mortar fire. Eventually, I just said screw it and made a run for the bush. I accidentally jumped onto this tree, which nearly got me spotted, but I was able to make it into the bush just barely in time. But the problem is, I now had two guards walking toward me, so I quickly throw down a smoke bomb so I can take them out, but as I'm doing so, the smoke bomb very quickly clears out and I think you know what happens next. The adventure is over. I feel like I could have done this part stealthily if I got another shot at it, but that's not how these videos work. The luck had I run out. You're a damn fraud, own. Shay. I never even got the chance to embrace my inner Templar. The smoke bombs last way shorter than I thought, so that was my error. But all in all, I still feel I did pretty good. The total time coming in at almost two hours flat, which I believe is my third best time in the series so far. Hey. I'll take it. Again, I didn't expect myself to be able to get hours into the old games without being spotted, so I'm quite satisfied with the result. I'm very curious and excited to do this for Black Flag next, so if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. And other than that, thanks for watching, I make and my own. you just I make couldn't my own. help I make yourself, my own. huh? I make my own. Have a good day!
I make my own.